Today's teardown is a Honda J-Series V6, and I know some of you might be saying, finally, he does a J-Series. Well, you might have even caught a glimpse of this engine in the last teardown, and it's not that I have anything against the J-Series V6. This is, in fact, one of my favorite Honda engines ever. These are very reliable engines. They're incredibly easy to work on. There's nothing not to like about them. I also don't sell a lot of them. They are so reliable. I don't really buy the cars that these come in, so I don't get a lot of them in in bad condition. I don't charge a core when I do sell them. So the likelihood of me having one of these engines that's bad is pretty low. However, one of these cars was offered to me with a bad engine and I passed that deal off to one of my employees contingent on the fact that I'd be able to do a teardown video on it, which will be my first J-Series teardown I've ever done. I've never, I've worked on these, but I've never torn one completely down. So it'll be a learning experience for both yourself and me if you haven't done one, which I'm sure many of you have. This engine has about 180,000 miles on it. It's a J30A5. It's a, from a 2007 Honda Accord V6. And apparently it was cruising down the highway and it shut off. I don't really believe that. They just shut off. Well, we'll get into it and we'll find out what happened. But I'm excited to get started on this. There's not a lot of value in this engine. So you might see me throw parts across the shop or drop things. And most of this is going to end up in the scrap bin. And I'll show you why. Now I'm no rocket surgeon, but I'm pretty sure the engineers didn't just place random broken holes in the side of the block. But the engine apparently wanted some extra ventilation, so it got some. I think that'll shut it off. At this point we know a few things. We know that the engine turned over enough to get the torque converter off, which is important. We also know that the block is a little broken. So clearly the next step is going to be to see if this turns over, because we need to know. At least I need to know. Well, oh yes, it does. Not too great, if I'm being honest. Now there's still plugs in here, but something tells me this is not compression. It doesn't make any obscene noises. Cool. Well, that'll make taking this apart a lot easier. The very first step is to pull the plugs and see what they look like. Well, there's good news and bad news here. Uh, the good news is there's no malice in the combustion palace. All these plugs look the same. Nothing's distorted. The engine did not regap these plugs. However, these are auto lights. And I know I've mentioned this before with Honda's past, but Honda's didn't come with auto light plugs. It's not that these plugs won't work. It's just that I believe that you should put the factory plugs in a factory vehicle. That's just how I've always been. You're not going to reinvent the wheel by putting some better plugs in, and you're surely not going to save anything by putting a cheaper plug in. The next thing we need to do is pull the intake manifold, and to do that, we have to pull this decorative co top cover off. And yes, I saved this hardware. And when you remove this, it reveals the bolts that hold the upper plenum to the lower manifold. Now we'll start getting these bolts out. Now we can lift this plenum. Now it may not look like it, but these are actually two separate manifolds. I'm gonna pull some brackets and fuel lines off so I can start to separate them. Now it looks like I could probably fight all of the bolts that hold the intake manifolds on to the cylinder head uh, with the rails in place, but I'm gonna remove the rails since all of this is getting broken down for essentially scrap. I got it anyway. Now 
it looks like there's five 12 millimeter bolts that hold these lower manifolds on. I don't know if my wrench is gonna get all of them. Hmm, this may not come off. I might have, I might have had to do the other side first. Let's keep trying because, well, let's just keep trying. Aha! Looks like you're supposed to do that side first. Yeah, it's much easier with that manifold out of the way. Well, there's not really anything to see, no damage in these intake ports. However, there's some like fragments of aluminum down here. How did they get there? I don't see any broken sections of the block in the valley. So that will be something we need to figure out where those came from. The next thing we're going to do is pull the driver's side valve cover. When I say driver's side, I meant the front. I think you all knew that, right? See how nice this looks. It's not that nice. It's not that nice at all. Well, this by no means was a well taken care of engine. There's lots of oil deposits on the heads of the rocker shaft bolts, and it's pretty well oil varnished in here. Everything seems to be pretty tight. I don't see anything alarming other than the way it looks. It's, well, that's a problem. Yep, that there is a problem. Now, on to the rear cylinder head. And this one looks a lot nicer, but there's still a fair amount of oil deposits I wonder why the heads look different. I'm going to spend a minute and pull the rear coolant crossover and EGR off the back of this engine. And now this is O-ringed in here. Next, we're gonna to try to remove the crank pulley bolt and get the crank pulley out of the way. Sometimes these fight you, but 50% of the time they come off every time. Except for this time. Time for the big one. Make sure we're going the right way here. Oh. Yep. Oh. Yeah, that one gets it. Next, we're going to strip all of the timing covers. Oh, looks like I missed one. It actually looks pretty good in here. You got your timing belt tensioner here. Here's the, here's the arm the tensioner pushes on. There's a pulley for that. Idler, this is the water pump. It all looks pretty good. It's not super wet in here. Maybe a little bit right here, but you don't know if that was from people uh, pouring oil in it incorrectly, or maybe a leaking power steering pump could have done this. I think that pump sits like right here. I might be wrong. Anyway, it looks pretty good in here, but we're gonna go ahead and peel this belt and some of this stuff off so we can start getting the heads off.
Now we can peel the heads off and these heads I can pull complete with the valve train, the cam, all that stuff can stay in the head and that's how I'm going to pull them. I'm actually going to listen to some of the viewers, some of the comments from the last video or last couple of videos and I'm going to turn this engine on its side so I'm not chasing this engine stand around the floor. It'll be a lot nicer that way I hope. Oh, it's starting to sound like a cash register. Oh, it is much easier. God, you guys are smart. Right off the bat, we can see that there's a little, that's better. Wait, that's still not better. There's a little chaos going on in here. So we're gonna kinda check to see if these are adjustable. That one is. And eh, maybe not that one. No, this, just this one. And there's definite marks on the top of that piston for making contact with the valves. And yeah, we can see it made contact with the valves. Those two combustion chambers look all right. That one is, the valves are pointed in the wrong direction. Oh, it sounds like someone's making change for a four cylinder. Or a three cylinder. This side looks just as confused as the other side. That's not right. That's not right. Okay, that one's not adjustable. That one's very adjustable. Also adjustable. It's a three cylinder. This was a three cylinder. Now the head I just pulled off looks a lot better. There's a little mark here for making contact with the piston, but the rest of it, not so bad. Let's peel off the water pump real quick. That's not a hammer. This is a hammer. Ah, it's trapped because of this idler pulley. Not anymore. Well, that looks kind of normal, actually. I was expecting something a little different. I'm gonna pull a few more parts off the outside of this and get kind of clean this short block up. All right, let's turn this thing over. Yep. That's totally a catch register engine. Wow. I gotta show you guys this. Well, for starters, uh, this oil pan has an additional drain port and the block very broken here, it's an exit wound here. But it's clear to me that this oil pan has been off. Look how much cleaner the pan is than the block. And there seems to be, um, well, if we know why there's an RTV shortage, they use like 55 tubes here. That's a lot of RTV. You know, there is such a thing as too much, guys. And this is probably too much. Well, there's something else here that's kind of interesting. Now, it's always been my experience that a connecting rod connects the piston to the crankshaft. In this case, this connects this part of the block to this part of the block because there is part of a connecting rod. Or maybe it's a disconnecting rod. 
Okay, time we go all the way over. I think, why are you fighting me? Those are all pleasant sounds. Yep, it's making change. All right, let's zip some tens out and get this pan out of the way. Oh my God, so much RTV. <laughs> oh man, Honda Piston McNuggets. Yeah, it just shut off, I'd say. That definitely shut off. The inside of the pan is a beautiful mosaic of oil, miscellaneous fluid, and miscellaneous engine parts. There's uh, another dent, an impact mark there, and that's where the big one is. Don't mind my little pry bar keeping this pan in place. Yeah, this is bad. Uh, this is just absolutely impressive. I don't even, I don't even know how to start this conversation. I, I mean, wh where do you start? That's a rod, that's heavy. That's a, a part. That's the bushing from the inside of the piston. It's another part of the rod here. We can put this back together. I mean, look at all of this. I don't think this shut off. I mean, maybe, okay, it probably shut off after it sounded like someone christened like 35 champagne glasses in succession. This is no small noise. This was not a muffled thud. This was an explosion. That's, um, that's part of a rod also. Most of this is rod. The small pieces are piston. Yeah, we need to, we need to save this here. It's like gravel, it's like engine gravel. Oh, look at that. There's part of the rod still bolted to, the rod cap bolted to the rod. And that will save that for later. Let's see what comes out of this. Ah, there's a wrist pin circlip. Some more unidentifiable. Yeah, that's a lot of junk in there. Well, no wonder this engine blew up. It had a bunch of metal in the pickup. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. I want to clean this up and see what we got here. There we go. Good as new. Well, it's pretty impressive what fit in that. There's lots of Reynolds wrap bearing material. One circlip. Lots of small fragments. No smoking gun. Okay, let's try to get the windows tree off. Yeah, we'll come back to that and that. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. It might work. Nope. Well, we're halfway there. Oh yeah, there's still a bolt here. Ah, that one won't be hard. I think that bolt's bent. Okay, here we go. Ooh, ah. There's more junk. I'm just really impressed this thing still turns over. I mean, look. The absolute damage. It's like a war zone in here. 
and it I'm I'm impressed it also can find a lot of the damage to the crankcase. The cylinder heads, aside from one combustion chamber with a bunch of bent valves, didn't look so bad. This on the other hand. Okay, let's see. Let's turn this over. I'm actually going to pull the rod caps loose. We only have three rod caps to take off. The other ones have already done some work for us. Let's get what we can get off now, and then we'll turn it to where we can get to the last one. I'm going to be careful and use my impact on it because we don't want to damage anything. Oh, that one's got some juice in it. Oh, hey. Sir Clip, that's where the other one went. Oh, something else solid just came out of there. Let's go in that one. All right, let's turn this over, get to the last rod that we need to take out. This is just impressive that this thing still turns over after all that. I don't know if that's coming out of the crank. There we go. Just gotta try a little harder. I can't get the bearings off. Ah, more juice. God, everything looks like you shot it with bird shot. I'd like you guys to look at the counterbalance on this crank. I mean, it is, I can't move it that way, but it, it is absolutely destroyed. I've never seen a crank beat up this bad. I just haven't. And it looks like, yes, there's some significant damage to that journal there. I guess that might have been the first one to let go. Let's pull this remain seal plate off and rain some more parts. I'm going to pull this oil filter off. I don't really have a cutter here, but I may save this for a later date. Ooh, shiny. Sparkles. Now I'm going to pull the oil filter housing off. Housing is also the VTEC solenoid. And if you've seen my other, oh, that's making a mess. It's fine. Just oil. If you've seen my other Honda videos, at least on the VTEC engines, you'll know that I talk about a screen in the VTEC solenoid gasket, and there is the screen there. So we're going to go ahead and pull that gasket off and take a look. Now, I'll be honest with you, I'm not quite sure the direction of oil flow in this engine. Again, this is the first time I've had a J-Series this far down. But this screen, in my experience on Honda VTEC engines, this screen is the first place you'll find bearing material if the bearings are coming apart. And this has quite a bit of bearing material here in the corner. But it's not jam-packed, which is kind of weird. I've seen them much worse than that, especially on D-Series. The next thing I'm going to do is start pulling bolts out until we can get the oil pump off. Alright, I think I got all the bolts out. Now it's time to pull the crank. I'm going to pull the bolts that hold the main caps from the side first and then the main cap bolts themselves. This might help. It does help. That one just fell right out. Now it's time we lift the crank out carefully, I think. Yes. I, yeah. 
I am surprised any rods and pistons made it out of this. I mean, we got a couple wrist pins. I didn't find that one. That one, it must have ejected itself. And here, here is the rod that's stuck in the block. And then here is another rod that's chunk. Rod McNugget, that's a new one. There's so much damage in this block. And the bearings don't look great either. It's clearly an oil starvation issue. Here's a couple of the lower main bearings. They are rough. And here's one of the caps that's even chewed up. Impressive. Here's what's left of that crank. That's That's pretty bad, folks. So it's like a, it's like one of those fighting robots, but it was inside the engine and the crankshaft was the weapon. It actually looks like it spun a main bearing too. Well, I suppose we should pull the remaining rods and pistons, well, the remaining pistons out. Carefully. Ooh, that one went into many pieces. Here's the rods and pistons ish out of this engine. Yeah, there's three of them. And then there's those. And this, that piston was almost going to come apart. It's cracked all the way through. The rings, the rings are holding it together. It's cracked at the valve reliefs. It's just the rings that kept that from coming apart. Yeah, it just stopped. It just shut off, guys. That teardown went just as I expected. It was incredibly easy. Nothing really fought me. I have to admit, Honda engines are some of my favorite to work on. They're very easy and forgiving. Um, they're really designed to be serviced. And I don't own any Hondas myself, but I don't need any more reasons to own any more cars. I think I have enough. I think what happened to this engine is a clear case of oil starvation. And I'm gonna borrow some information from the guy that put the engine in, my employee. He's an ex-Honda tech. And he said that someone put a pan on this engine without dropping the subframe. And when you do that, you have a really tight area to work in to get that pan back onto the engine. And you're, it's very easy to wipe some of the RTV off of the mating surface of that pan, which would create an oil leak as you put the pan onto the engine. And you could also put some RTV into the pickup in the same process, which would then starve the engine of oil. Either way, it was either run low on oil or that pickup was full of RTV and I just didn't see where it went. Maybe in the explosion, it shot that out. That's kind of what I was looking for when I pulled that pickup and cleaned it out, but I didn't see any RTV in there. That engine did not just shut off. Let me be clear. The stories that people tell service riders and mechanics, you can hardly ever believe them unless they're caught on video. That didn't just shut off, that exploded. That was a, a glorious explosion. I wish I was there for that. I always like seeing things come apart. I really don't have a lot of parts to sell off of this engine, although that really wasn't the point of this video. It was just for the video. Uh, but if you'd like to buy parts off of any of my other engines I've torn down or anything else, shoot me an email. I'm going to leave our email in the video description. And as always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.